there are two kinds of desktop 3D printers currently in terms of main categories, plastic printers and resin printers. And this video is going to talk about the differences between the two. A plastic printer or an FDM printer, fused deposition modeling, I believe, basically uses rolls of filament, just plastic. It's been extruded into a long, 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 long line. This is a 1.75 millimeter uh, thick roll of filament, which is right now the standard uh, width of filament for most desktop printers. And then the 3D printer will have a nozzle on it. The nozzle can get hot and it can extrude plastic through it. So you imagine your nozzle, which is going to be on a gantry that can move around, and then your plastic, which you load into the printer, and you load it in and it goes into the nozzle and you push it in until it starts squirting out the bottom. The printer then takes whatever file you loaded into it, it's so a 3D file, and then it starts, once this is nice and hot, it goes down to its build plate, and then it starts squirting out plastic in the shape of the bottom of your object. And so it squirts all that out, moves the extruder up a little bit, squirts out more plastic into the shape of the next level up, if you will, of the model, and keeps on squirting, keeps on squirting all the way up until you have your model 3D printed and sitting on your, um, on your build plate. That's the idea, at least. Very straightforward. And that's, again, using a certain kinds of plastic. It's not necessarily a plastic you'll get in an action figure, um, the special formulations for 3D printing, um, but very similar. The other option is what's called a resin 3D printer. And I can't show you this because I don't actually own one because they're kind of expensive and we'll get to that. But a resin printer uses a vat and we'll use this as our kind of example. And so you can imagine a vat full of liquid resin, right? And then above it is sitting a projector, like a projector you'd have at the office to project, you know, computer desktops onto the wall. And the neat thing about that projector, and, well, certain projectors, is that if you expose the light in that projector to liquid resin, it will harden or cure that resin just at a particular distance, very, very thin distance. So you get a very thin layer of resin that's hardened, and it's only where light has been exposed out of that projector. So imagine that you're projecting a smiley face, right? It's a white smiley face and black all around it. You shine that onto your resin, it will cure a very, very thin layer showing that smiley face. You can then move the vat up or down, depending on the, the design of the printer, and then the, um, the projector will um, zap it with another shape, which is the next layer of your object. Uh, perhaps it's more of that smiley face, perhaps it's a base, whatever. And that will cure another layer very, very thin. A resin printer can have extremely high resolution compared to a plastic printer. Um, a plastic printer can go down to a tenth of a millimeter, and a resin, can go, resin printer can go down to way, way um, much more, more high detail than that. I've got another video coming uh, showing you different resolutions. So the nice thing about a resin printer is that you get very high detail. On the other hand, that projector if you try to uh, cure a large area, it gets blurry. The image just does not hold together at larger sizes, at least for the kinds of projectors you can get in a desktop 3D printer. You know, it doesn't cost tens of thousands of dollars. So that is the limitation, is you're only talking about a few inches wide and uh, deep, and indeed only maybe a, a couple inches tall for a resin printer. You just can't get beyond that for a desktop, you know, reasonable price desktop printer, you know, sub $2,000. Uh, whereas with a, a plastic printer, you can get down to 150 bucks for one of these printers, let's say 200, because um, it's just moving around this hot extruder and squirting out plastic. So those are two of the, the big issues. The other significant issue with resin is that it's toxic, especially when it's being cured meaning that if you have a resin printer, you do not want to be sitting in the same room while it's printing. In fact, most of the resin printers I've seen for desktop have enclosures in them, like, like hard plastic enclosures, so that you're not breathing in those fumes. Um, plastic printers emit, they do emit some fumes. There's no evidence that they are directly toxic. They might, um, um, they might inflame allergies somewhat, basically, um, but there's no, 
proof so far that they are literally toxic. Resin, yeah. So not something you want to just have sitting around, especially if you have young children, things along those lines, for resin printers especially. So resin printers, a little bit more um, uh, difficult to work with in that sense. Um, I don't want to call them dangerous, but they definitely have that, that downside to them. Great uh, resolution, but uh, smaller. That's just kind of the nature of things right now. So, hope that was helpful, and uh, I got more 3D printing videos coming. Hope you watch those, and hope you find all this helpful.